Hey, Michael here from Tombstone Tumbleweed Art. If you like our videos and you would like us to make more, feel free to give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook, and go check out our online art gallery at the link that is down in the description. Thank you. Alright, when we left off in part one of the video series, my buddy Brad Stefanov asked me, how do we keep the colors of the original fractal? Well, by golly, that's a deeper question than I thought. It turns out at this moment in time with just a point cloud, we cannot, and that's because the .PLY and .OBJ importers that come with Blender, when they encounter a model that has zero faces, like a point cloud, it's just going to strip out the color data, regardless if it's in the, the imported file or not. Now, I am more learning more Python, so that I'll be able to uh, tweak the importer to force the color data in, and then I have to figure out some sort of voxel-based proximity particle colorizing algorithm. Say that a couple of times fast. Now, all this is not terribly difficult, it's just time-consuming, and, you know, none of us want to wait to make awesome fractals. We want to make awesome fractals right now! And so, we come up with the awesome groovy color hack that I'm about to show you. Here we go. Okay, before we continue, you're going to need MeshLab. If you don't have that already, I suggest pausing the video here and going to the link in the description and downloading it and installing it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to follow along very well. Okay. Next up, we're going to make a point cloud in Mandelbaum as per the usual method. However, we are not going to make the mesh out of it using the Poisson reconstruction inside of MeshLab, and I will show you why. So MeshLab is awesome, I use it all the time, but its Poisson reconstruction leaves a bit to be desired. Now, like on our integer power, where it's nice and round and smooth, that's not too shabby. However, we switch over to something more spiky, like this Beth 323 here. Well, check this out. Switch to the Poisson, and BAM! Elephant ears! And a lot of times you're going to get a bunch of extra geometry with this. And if you really want to, you can go in and delete all that by hand, but I think we have a better method here. How about we make the mesh inside of mantle bulb, because that's designed for making meshes of, well, mantle bulbs. Yes, okay, that's a much better idea. Okay, we are setting up our point cloud here. Uh, be sure to save it as a PLY file. Of course, that's fairly obvious, because that's the only option we're given. Uh, a note about the resolution. I have it set at 512, which is going to generate about 2 million vertices when it's all said and done. Now, there's no one size that fits all on this. Uh, I've, been, I've been able to go as high as 700 with no problem. I've had one crash and ran out of memory on a 16 gig machine at 512. So it really depends more on the fractal and the amount of data that it has to compute up inside the preview window. As soon as your point cloud is finished generating, don't change any of the settings, just go over to Mesh Type and choose Mesh. Uh, the, the resolution does not have to be the same, also none of these have to be at the standard powers of 2, like 256, 512, and so on. Um, I just tried it and I got lucky, it worked pretty good. Uh, oversampling, I chose none. It takes a much longer time with any of the oversampling options and I haven't really noticed a whole lot of difference. Uh, one thing you will notice, I have turned off the Taubin smoothing. Um, I just don't like the way it looks with it. It kind of like inflates the fractal from inside and makes it balloony, like a balloon animal. And uh, that's not cool. We don't like that. Uh, also, be sure to save this one as an OBJ. All right. Now, when I generated this, uh, it took about an hour and a half on, uh, on my uh, Ryzen 1700X. So uh, you might want to set this up to run overnight, just in case uh, it takes a really long time. All right, now that everything is done computing, we fire up MeshLab, and now the fun starts. Okay, go ahead and import in your point cloud. I've already done this, so I'm just going to hit cancel here on the video, but it's on the first layer there. All right, yep, that's a point cloud, all right. Now, you're going to need to compute the normals for your point set. And do this by going up to filters, normals, etc. Compute normals for point clouds. I've done this anywhere from 100 up to 500, but 100 is faster, and I don't see any difference, so I'm just going to stick with 100. So uh, go ahead, I already did that. Now, go ahead and import in your mesh that you made in Mandelbulb. Uh, it's on here somewhere. I lost track of the file. Let's see if, uh, okay, well, I already did it, so I'll just hit cancel again. All right, that's on your next layer, and boing! It's huge! Yes, even though this is made by the same program, the... Uh, the mesh generally is quite a bit larger, so we're going to need to make these as close to as uh, the same size as possible. 
for about getting to the magic part. So select the cloud. And kind of zoom in there to get a better look at it. I'm going to go to edit, 3D manipulators, and we want to scale. Now this acts a little weird sometimes. Uh, usually you get the first one down and hit enter to apply the, uh, the scaling. And then the uh, widget will come up and you'll have to hit escape back and forth. If, rule of thumb, if, if the, the transform isn't working, you're either on the wrong layer, like I am right here, whoops, or the, uh, the little manipulating widget is up there like it is there. Yep, right, so hit escape, takes it off. Now, finally, we can scale again. Okay, cool. So let's check and see how close we're getting here. Stop editing, just in case. All right. Cranking around. Okay, that's pretty close. All right. Now, you see, the reason for getting these at as close to the same size as possible is that we're going to turn the point cloud into a paintbrush, and we're going to stamp the color data onto the mesh. It's just ridiculous, I tell you. This is, this is the stuff that nerd dreams are made of. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. So, now I go up to Filter, Sampling, Texture Attribute, Vertex Attribute. Okay, now sometimes when you pull these up, the two meshes are reversed. So you want to go from the cloud to the object and just color. Don't do normals because that is weird. Hit Apply. Bam. Oh my goodness. Turn off visibility and look at that. That is a colored mesh. My goodness, we have pulled off the near impossible. How about that? Now, sometimes the sizing isn't that good, um, and you get some gaps of gray in there. Just uh, fire up the Z Painter here, which is quite a bit kind of like a Substance Painter, but just a light version, of course. It's not as awesome, but it's pretty awesome. And make sure you got the right layer again, like I didn't. Oops. Okay. Sample the color off of the uh, thing there. Yep, there it is. Okay, now grab your paintbrush and paint away on the mesh. Oh my goodness, isn't that pretty? Well, how about that? Let's, let's, let's get a little freaky here. Let's give him a red spot. Blam! Check that out. And uh, let's grab the blender. Let's kind of blend this in a little bit. Hey, that's a good point. I like that. Okay, we're blending and we're blending. Anyway, go ahead and tweak on your colors until you get uh, until you're satisfied with it all. And finally, when you are all done, be sure to go ahead and export your newly colored mesh as a PLY. And just go ahead and give this a file name here. Okay, color and normal, yes. And hit OK. Bink. Over to Blender, I promise we are almost finished. Okay, what we want to do now is go to File import our newly colored ply model and this takes a long time to do so i already have it loaded in a separate layer eventually you will see something like this but hey there's no colors what gives mr proska have you led us down a rabbit trail not at all they are there you just can't see them yet because blender stores vertex colors in a separate data block apart from everything else to see it to verify it's there we go to the data icon and sure enough you see something called call let's expose those colors shall we to the node editor now go ahead add input attribute inside the name field fill in col connect this noodle here and take a deep breath and oh my goodness oh look at that that's a colored mesh inside of blender hey isn't it pretty I wonder what that looks like rendered. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh my. Oh, look at that. Well, that's just... That's just spectacular. And that's just about it. That's the workflow. Now, there is one more cool trick that I wanted to show you. Uh, add in a... Let's see, a vector... Bump mapping node. And then add in a... Color? No, uh, converter. Converter RGB to black and white. Pipe those vertex colors through that black and white there. Plug it into the height. Connect the normals. 
and bam, you get automatic fine details. Ooh, check that out. And of course, you can play with the strength and the height and all these cool things. And oh boy, it's just uh, it's just a fine thing. And so for our final thoughts. Uh, I've included a link to my Dropbox account so you can download the blend file that I used to create the uh, awesome Fractal and Suzanne. Uh, the mud is just a, a background that I downloaded from Pixabay, so that's free to use. And uh, I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with with this stuff. Uh, post anything you like uh, on the comments and I'll be sure to, uh, to give you a shout out. Alright, this is Michael, signing off. Until next time.